what's the difference between remote desktop and remote assistance. On the left, I have a machine running Windows 10 Pro. Windows 10 Pro supports remote access connections to it so that people can take control of the machine using Windows Remote Desktop. On the right, I have a Windows 10 Home Edition machine. It does not support Windows Remote Desktop connections to it, but it can initiate and control other machines because it does have the remote desktop client on it. So let's start first by confirming that remote desktop is enabled. If we take a look at remote desktop settings here on the Windows 10 Pro machine, you'll see that I have enable remote desktop turned on. This will allow other machines to connect to me. On the right, we'll go ahead and run the remote desktop program. Remote desktop connection app. The name of the machine in this case is what I'll be entering here. I'm doing this only on a local network, so these machines are both easily visible to one another. This becomes quite complicated if you're trying to do it remotely across the internet. I'm going to ignore all the options. You can see that there are several, but I'm going to ignore those for now. We'll just go ahead and type in the computer name and hit connect. Now the warning we get is that we, because we are not using uh, paid for certificates with some kind of official validation, these are local certificates. As long as you know what machine you're connecting to and things are doing things local, it's quite all right to say, don't ask me again for connections to this computer. We'll say, go ahead and connect anyway. Yes. So you can see now on the left hand side, the machine is actually returned to its sign in page. But on the right hand machine, we have a window. That window is actually a window on the other machine. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and maximize it so that it will take up the entire screen on the right hand side. And you can see now that there is a task bar, a little notification bar type thing across the top that tells you the name of the machine you're connecting to, which is the machine on the right on the left. You can see it says Windows 10 Pro. Well, that was the machine on the left. We are now completely controlling the machine on the left as if we were sitting right in front of it. But you'll notice that the machine on the left, the machine that is being controlled remotely, can't see what's happening. The only thing you can do is disconnect. The way to do that is to simply re-log in. And you can see the machine on the right now has lost its connection to the machine on the left. If we hit OK, the screen goes back to the Windows 10 home screen and we've seen that, you know, the remote desktop program is back up ready to make a connection, but it has lost its connection. So this machine on the left is no longer being controlled remotely. That's remote desktop in a nutshell. It's simply a way to take complete control of a machine as if you were sitting in front of it. Remote assistance, on the other hand, is something different. So I'll go ahead and search for remote assistance here on the on the left and we'll click on invite someone to connect to your PC and help you or offer to help. Now we have a couple of different approaches here. What I'm going to do is invite someone you trust to help you. In other words, you, the person running this machine, you're asking someone else for help. You're inviting them to help you. We're going to save this invitation as a file. Now, it doesn't really matter how you get this file to the other person. You can attach it to an email. You can do any number of different things. But it's this file then that gives them access to your machine, um, plus a password, as we'll see in a minute. In the case that I'm running here, you'll see that I'm saving this to my OneDrive Documents folder. The two machines you see in front of you are in fact sharing or are both enrolled in the same OneDrive account. So if I now go over to this machine on the right, fire up File Explorer and go into my OneDrive folder, Documents folder, you'll see that there is in fact now this invitation file. We'll double click on that. Now on the left, 
the remote assistance is providing a password. You must now give that password somehow to the person that's attempting to connect to you. Generally, this would be done, say, over the phone. But again, any technique that works for you will work here. In my case, since I can see both, I'm simply going to type them, type it in. Hopefully I've got it right. I'll hit OK on the right hand machine. You can see that it's now attempting to connect. The machine on the right has in fact connected to the machine on the left and is now requesting your final permission to actually allow this remote machine to have access. We'll say yes. So what's happened here is that the machine on the right can now see everything that happens to the machine on the left. Now the mouse pointer, my real mouse pointer, is actually the mouse pointer on the left, the machine being controlled. And if I make changes over here, you'll see that it is reflected on what the person helping, who is on the right, would see. So I can fire up the start menu, I can show them the problems that I'm having with my applications and so forth. What's important here, and I'm going to go ahead and move my mouse from the left hand machine to the right hand machine. You can see I only have one mouse pointer. The right hand machine cannot yet control anything on the left hand machine. Again, the left hand machine is the machine on which you are requesting assistance and the right hand machine is the machine where the person is helping you. This is the person that's watching what you're doing. That person at this point cannot actually do anything to your machine. They can only watch what you're doing. If the person helping you wants to control your machine, to actually be able to drive your machine as if they were in front of it, they need to request control. That's what this button is up here. So if we click on that, the remote person on the right is now requesting access of the local person on the left. You have to approve that. You can say yes or no. If you really trust them and UAC prompts are a thing that may happen, you can choose to also allow them to respond to user account control prompt. That's a security issue. If they can't respond to UAC, you then still have the opportunity to prevent them from doing things that perhaps they shouldn't be doing. But in this case, since we are fully trusted, I'm going to say yes. Here's what's happened. On the left, my machine is, well, it is what I'm doing. Again, this is the Windows 10 Pro machine, and I have invited someone to access this machine remotely. On the right-hand side, however, Again, only one mouse pointer. You can see that this is the Windows 10 Home machine and it is running the remote assistance application. Within the remote assistance application, now having been given control by the person who's requesting assistance, I can now do things like run programs on their machine. I can now you know, run their start menu. I can do whatever they want or I need to do to help them with their, program, with their problems. The important difference here is you can see that there were a number of steps that we had to go through in order to give the remote person access to your machine. We had to transfer a file, they had to enter a password, and in order to control the machine, they actually had to request permission and you had to give it. The other huge difference between this and remote desktop is simply that you can see what's going on. Everything that the remote person on the, on the right is doing, you will see on the left. If they fire up Edge, you will see Edge. If they run the mail program, they're running it on your machine and you will see it. If they type the start menu, again, that's happening on your machine, the local machine, the machine from which you requested help. Now, if you decide you're done, you don't want them to do it anymore, well, there are two levels to that. 
One is you can stop sharing. What that means is that they can no longer control your machine. So on the right hand machine, I'm clicking on the start menu and nothing is happening because we've stopped sharing control. They can still see what's happening on your machine. I'm now clicking on the start menu on the left hand machine, but they cannot actually control your machine. They can only see. And finally, if you're done, done and want to disconnect, well, just close the remote assistance application program. Poof. And now you have sole control of your machine again, as evidenced by the desktop being displayed once again. They have the remote assistance program, but they're not connected to anything. They can then remove that. Finally, like remote desktop, remote assistance needs to be enabled. So if we just search for remote assistance, this tops entry is the program that actually makes a remote assistance happen. But allow remote assistance invitations is what allows you to even do that. And we're going ahead and say, you know, remote assistance, allow remote assistance connections to this computer, which basically enables this entire scenario we've just described. So that's remote assistance and remote desktop. Two different ways of accessing a computer remotely. In Windows 10 Home, you can connect to either remote desktop or remote assistance, but you can only accept connections from remote assistance. You cannot connect to a Windows 10 Home machine using remote desktop. Windows 10 Pro, you can do whatever you like.